All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Rejoined, welcoming back Dion Major. How are you doing, Dion? I am well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you today? I'm great. And Dion is literally just up the road in uh, <laughs> Viejo in Orange County, another another beautiful part of the world. Yes. And what we're going to talk about today, because Dion's a 25 year sales and technology veteran who started Revenue by Design in 2004. Uh, she is the as the founder and CEO of Revenue by Design. She believes in people, purpose and planning, keeping it real, meaning using a lot of common sense. <laughs> and uh, Dion is the author of the book, The Stepped Approach. And what we're going to talk about today is the three-step process to unlock and unblock revenue growth. And, uh, you know, let's face it, uh, you know, these have been challenging times for a lot of people. I'm sure there's people out there would love to know how they can get past these blockages and also then unlock even more opportunities. So first of all, um, Dion, wh where did the three-step process come from? Oh, it, um, that's a great question. And it really came from codifying what we're seeing and hearing from our clients. And then even when I get stuck with things because we're human and quite frankly, we all get stuck. So it really came from how can I devise a system based upon feedback and real world examples and what's happening right now with our clients and the world and give people and give people's brains an easy three-step process to follow. That's where it came from. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, let's face it, like sometimes, uh, you know, things get overcomplicated mm -hmm. or, or there are so many competing like ways of doing things and new things are coming out and tools and all of that. Uh, but uh you know, you you are all about practicality and having things that people understand. So what, what is the first step of, of that process? Mm -hmm. The very first step we talk with everybody about is identify. Because to your point, John, and I, and I lovingly say this to all of us, as adults, we would most likely fail kindergarten. And yeah. so we talk about keeping it simple, narrowing it down, identify what is it you want to accomplish. It's an oversimplification and it sometimes stumps people because it clears out the clutter and focuses on what is it we're actually trying to do? What problem are we trying to solve? Start there. Yeah. And, and I like the clarity of that because, I mean, the problem is the problem is that often we <laughs> don't know what the problem is or we think <laughs> of something or we don't. die. Uh, we don't um, we don't look into it enough because it's that old saying. What is it? Uh, prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. But, you know, how often do we immediately get into solving mode before we've even identified what the problem truly is? 100%. 100%. We, when we talk about identifying first, John, we're, we're, we're separating out our, um, our tendency to confuse, describe, and define. Mm, yeah. And so we always start there. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's really interesting. Describe or, or or define, yeah, because it's it's. Uh, I mean, there's an interesting distinction distinction between the the two of them. But once you can really get down into into understanding the, the problem, and 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 what angles do you come at when you're really trying to un, un understand what might be holding a company back from from yeah. doing their best and and yeah. uh, generating more revenue, more predictable revenue. Yeah, um, we we do keep it simple and we talk about identifying, okay, and identifying the problem you're trying to solve and what questions are we, are we trying to answer. Once we start identifying that, we dig deeper. So we we uh, we lead by example. And so when we do sales training, we, we do trainings on going three questions deep and we lead by example with that. And so when we're talking with folks and we say, we're going to identify the problem or the question, the problem you're trying to solve or the questions that need to be answered. And we ask, what are your goals for the year? Right. How yeah. do you know you're going to achieve them? Are your goals tied from executive leadership to from your CEO, your C-suite to leadership, to your frontline folks? How so? How do you know it's working? So we start digging into 
um, the factors that make up the identification of what we're trying to solve. And one of the things you just referenced there, and I think it's it's really important, and that is uh, have the the expectations, the senior leadership, et cetera, have they been communicated properly? Are they understood or is there a, a big disconnect? Because, you know, companies sometimes love to go through these strategic planning processes and all of that and then pump out these papers and, pe and most of the people in the company are like, well, okay, I have no idea what this is about. Nope. Nope. <laughs> There's a huge disconnect, huge disconnect. And it happens every time. Because the part of the brain that you're using at that C level is completely different from an application perspective of your frontline rep, mm -hmm. right? And so you've got your C levels who are like, I've got to report to a board or, you know, we've got big strategic things we want to do with a company. And as that executive, you are taking into consideration every single part of the business marketing, CS, account manager, product marketing, um, your, your SEO, your nonprofit philanthropic activities if you need to, and oh, by the way, your reps, mm -hmm. right? And so it's very different. Whereas your frontline salespeople or any frontline folks, all they want to do is their job. And that gap is what we solve for through this mm -hmm. process. Yeah. And I think what's um and, and it's and it's 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 always kind of fascinating because at the end of the day, the salespeople are the tip of the spear. The salespeople are often the first, you know, major inter interaction with the prospective customer or the yes. the market. And therefore, if they're not aligned and on board and Absolutely. understand their role and understand what you're trying to achieve, you know, then I mean that's that's probably the first problem you come across in in unblocking revenue is what revenue are you going after yep absolutely we identify all of that and and it's funny you use that analogy of tip of the spear john because we do the same thing and one of the questions we'll ask is is your spear broken mm -hmm. because the tip of the spear is typically aligned and tied to a stick mm -hmm. right it's not the tip isn't on its own it's yeah, not yeah. effective and so we ask those questions, okay, great. If your salespeople are going out to market, what's the homework for the ICP? What's the homework for the talk tracks? What homework have we done to identify the problem or perceived problem or real problem we think we are solving in the marketplace? Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, the the interesting thing about, uh, I mean, just the spear analogy for a moment again is, is yes, it, it's attached to a report. If you don't have control over that spear, you can do more damage to yourself and your own organization <laughs> than to anything else. 100%. 100%. So we talk about what actually has to go into making a spear. There's a team. There's a, there's, there are people that go into that before the spear hits the warrior's hands. And oh, right, by the right. way, there's training for the warrior, right? So it's it's easy to have these taglines. Mm -hmm. and, and you and I both know to, to be truly effective in hand-to-hand -hand yeah. combat with a spear. I'm just guessing. I don't know. I'm not a spear person. Yeah. Kind of requires some work. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. So what's the what's the second step in the process? Yeah, we specify. So a lot of what we were just talking about. So at first we identify what are the blockages? What questions are we trying to ask for? How do we know it's a block? All that good stuff. Then we start getting, then we start getting into the specification or specificity of it. So our identify is really the what questions we're asking. Once we start, once we kind of narrow down, okay, what problem are we truly trying to solve? Then we start getting into specifics around it. Then we start answering and asking the questions of the who, what, how, when, where, and why. Um, do we have the right messaging? How do we know? How are we testing it? So then we start getting specifics around it. Did, did, are we even, how did we come up with the market we're going after? What KPIs were we going to use to measure success? And how is that going? Mm -hmm. So we get really specific around it. Yeah. And how often when you get into that process, do people realize that perhaps what they thought the problem was, or they thought the components of the problem were turn out to be very different. 100%. There's a 100% hit rate on that. <laughs> yeah. And what are some of the what are some of the what are some of the issues that kind of surprise people that they weren't aware of? Um, the biggest problem people have is is are two things, really. One is misalignment. Mm -hmm. Two, 
is um, really the the process, and and that directly ties to confidence. Mm. And so, and when you talk about, uh, I mean, alignment is a is an interesting one because that's something you know, especially internal alignment. That's something that you have complete control over. Hundred percent. It's not something that, you know, you could say, well, that's outside my control. That's come 100 percent. You've got uh, yeah. complete control over. And then the the, the confidence piece is it, that that's a really interesting one as well, because, I mean, when you dig down and you find like that, there, that part of the problem is 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 the how people are feeling on their perception yeah. of their own self and their perception of their role and the messages they're getting perhaps internally as well um because if we go back to the tip of the spear um analogy i mean you want you want your your frontline people to be as confident and and passionate about what they do and about mm -hmm. and about you know presenting the best face of your company possible mm -hmm. but if they're reticent you're you're kind of doing the opposite 100 percent hundred percent and even confidence in the sales process mm -hmm. yeah. and what is supposed to happen. And so that is a huge issue where we may see reps aren't necessarily taken through the appropriate paces to get them comfortable with the messaging mm -hmm. and or what happens after the customer says yes. So a lot of times what we're seeing is an organization will say, hey, we're going to go to market with this, or maybe we want to test an idea, which is great. Yeah. What we're not doing is then getting to a point where we are starting with the end in mind, meaning when a customer says yes, you are going to confidently share with them, thank you so much. Here are our next steps. And here's what you, the, cus the customer, our client can now expect. Right. So sometimes right. we're so focused on those initial dollars, we lose sight of the fact that life and sales is about a relationship. Yeah, yeah. And and what's the biggest complaint that you always get from the folks who maybe have to take over the onboarding and the project management and all of that yeah. is, is that it's an inelegant handoff, right? Is that when the stuff comes <laughs> flying over the wall, this is yours now. And the poor person who's receiving it is like, I don't know anything about this. What's this? And it turns out later that, oh, they were promised something special or there was some information missing in, in the CRM and you didn't. And so I think that's the and, and that trend and customers feel that I always 100%. feel that that's the point. That's always my how I measure uh an organization, regardless of whether it's a big purchase or whether it's a, it's yes. a consumer, whether I'm getting somebody to do something around the house, what is the, when you work with the salesperson and then they transfer you eventually over yeah. to the people who are going to do the implementation, what is, what does that feel like to you? Yeah. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, it's really clunky. Yeah. And so to your point, when we start talking about the specifics of the customer journey, it's through and through. It's from beginning to customer lifetime. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about handoffs and handshakes and getting everybody to work together. And what does it look like to fulfill um, whatever we're selling somebody? Mm -hmm. and, and so we, we encourage teams to get up and we, we lovingly call it everybody one chair up and to the left. Mm -hmm. And so because we don't know what um, somebody else's role is like until we've lived it. And yeah. So, yeah, we get really we dive into specifics with that and um, then drive to that. So we're we're having a we're delivering a better customer experience as well. What yeah. were you going to say? Yeah, no, I was I, I really uh, I, I agree with you. And it's 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 always very interesting because the worst thing is when you get that is when you are in the implementation phase as a customer and you ask something and and, you know, they the implementation people kind of look at you and go, Oh, I don't know. That's you'll have to talk to the sales guy, or I'll have to. Yeah. Ask, oh, I don't know what that's about. And yeah. then, and that and and immediately you just displayed or communicated. Oh, there's a little bit of internal tension here in this company. They're not talking to each other now. So my confidence as a as a customer is going is starting to dip. And we always have that little bit of motivation, you know, buyer's remorse, or yes. you know, afterwards yes. so we're, we're looking for proof points that we've made a good decision. Yes. 100%, John, 100%. And we talk about that too, where it's, don't put more work on the customer. That's not fair. 
right? And all you're doing is like, you are putting the kid in between a fighting mom and dad. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is not okay. And so none of that is okay. The appropriate answer is, wow, we're really happy you like what you purchased. I'm not really sure about the answer to that. Let me get back to you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just, and, and I think as we said in your intro, I mean, you focus a lot on common sense and it's, yeah. it's common sense. <laughs> As you said, it's just common sense. Don't push it back on the person who's actually paying money for this, who's doing you know, doing you the courtesy of actually paying for your product or service. Yeah. So what's your, what's what's step three? Yeah, step three is testify. Uh, we when we went to market, we have an ebook out there on our Kindle, on my Kindle Kindle author site, um, and we originally went to market with identify, specify, execute, because I was a little hesitant on using the word testify. Mm. And that that's the people pleaser in me coming out. So for right. those of you that are recovering people pleasers, go with your gut because now I have to go change everything. <laughs> um, but when we think about testify, it's testify is getting up and stating the facts. Mm. And facts are irrefutable. Yeah. And so once we go through the first step of identify the what, we get into the specifics, uh, identifying our who, what, how, when, where, and why, and, and going from there, then we want to document that and we want to start testifying that. We want to testify to the fact that we've got our stuff figured out. We understand what we're doing. We have our heading, right or wrong, but we can always course correct. Sure. And we're going to come up with a plan to implement. So yeah. testify is great. Here's our kickoff. Here's our milestones. Here's how we know we're going to be successful. Here's where we're going to have a milestone to gauge whether or not we've got the right KPIs. And if we do great, and if we don't, we're going to course correct. We're going to learn fast. Mm -hmm. And so we identify, we test, and we identify, we specify, we testify. And that is community. When we talk, I'm a word nerd, if you haven't yeah. by now, right? And so when we talk with folks, we say, we need to communicate and communicate is a verb. It implies action. Yeah, yeah. And so many times, like you say, we're throwing stuff over the fence and like people will figure it out. And I'm just as guilty of that. But that's not how it works. Yeah, you can put documentation out there, but people want a conversation because they want to understand. Yeah. So let's make it easy for our teams to understand, for our customers to understand. And all of that is okay. Yeah, and because I think one of the one of the issues that people struggle with today is, you know, you have all sorts of different. Somebody told me we five generations in the workforce for the first <laughs> time ever. I don't even know how that's possible, but anyway, <laughs> that's true. Um, and we also have so many different ways of consuming information yes. today, and it, you know, sometimes it's generational, sometimes it's not. It's just, but. The fact is, as you said, is you can't rely on saying, well, we documented everything. So here's the output. Everybody go off and consume that and you'll all be good and we'll move on is, as you said, you have to you have to go a level down and make sure that people are understanding. And if people need, you know, conversations, if they need it in different formats, if they need yeah. whatever you need in order, because you can't testify until you know that there's a uniform and universal understanding. Right. 100%, John, 100%. Are you seeing the same thing in, in, in conversations you're having? What no, are no, you uh, no I, I, absolutely, absolutely. And I think one, one thing I do on that I, I actually, uh, you know, do discuss a lot today is that if you do these things, and you said, you said yourself, like common sense, these are common sense, you know, problem with common sense is, you know, is not, not that so common. common. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and people and and people also confuse simple and easy, right? Uh, All the so time. They think that if you can make, you know, if you can get down and make this a simple process and think it, that doesn't mean it's easy because people are very good at ignoring or, or, or at, uh, you know, going off on tangents or exceptions or stuff like that. But to get an understanding of the steps like you've outlined, mm -hmm. I think that's incredibly important. And uh, and people sometimes skip over that because yes. they think, well, this looks like it's easy. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It looks like it's easy. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear you on that, John. I agree with you. And I mean, that's why we talk about these things, because I'm, I'm human just like everybody else. And I want it to be simple and easy all the time. Yeah. And we just know that's not true. I mean, to, to be really good at something requires effort and it requires work and it requires a methodology. It doesn't matter what it is. 
just pick yeah. something, yeah. right? And, and document it and go from there. But it requires some focused effort, attention, and dedication for sure. Yeah. And as you say, then you can tweak as you go because we know we live yes. in a very dynamic uh, environment today. So yes. I mean, the days of the days of like putting together your process and saying, okay, I'm good for the next few years is gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's so funny you say that because we talk with folks and we talk about time and a generation used to be 35 years. Mm -hmm. And there's research out there, right, that that supports most of this. Um, and um, but now a generation is seven years. Wow. And we think about that. So we think about time and numbers. And when I talk with folks, I will say, as a female, I'm really only the second generation from a 35 year mark mm. of women working full time. Right. I am only the second generation of women driving full time. Mm -hmm. Driving. Driving. Right? Exactly. And so there's probably some benchmarks for, for the male population mm -hmm. as well. But I think when we think about time and being fluid with it, we're, we're going at a really rapid pace for sure. So just things to keep in mind. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It is fascinating. Absolutely. And, uh, and just one last question. What, what are some of the, when, when you, when you do this with an organization and it all comes together, what are the outcomes? What, what's different for that organization? Yeah. You know, a lot of the results we see are from a tangible perspective, we see reps with increased confidence. So their, their numbers all go up. The KPIs we're measuring. So conversation rates, uh, conversion through the funnel, close rates, um, we definitely see all of those numbers go up from a qualitative perspective. We do see that confidence grow, grow as well, but we also see the team coming together mm -hmm. because a lot of from leadership and reps, we see the team coming together because the exercises we have everybody go through opens up dialogue. Right. And they start to know and see each other in a different way as humans, um, mm -hmm. everybody trying to accomplish the same thing. And so we see we see increase in all the KPIs we're measuring. We see an increase in confidence. And we see um, a little bit easier way for people to work because what we've done through our process is normalize, right? There's, there's mm -hmm. one dashboard. The KPIs are similar. We're not having reps go out and do BI power plays everywhere. Right. So... Um, it's it's really the the simplification which gives people peace as well that, and mm -hmm. and confidence to do their job and in that increase in velocity. Yeah, because I, I mean I, I think unfortunately sometimes uh, we overlook the impact of having people go through processes together yes. like internal people and what yes. that does because yep. we're always so externally focused and we yeah. think where we're going to spend our money is always we're going to do it on something that's yep. external you know as yep. opposed to going if you have people go through this process you know and then they're all aligned they actually might end up knowing each other they might end yeah. up actually appreciating what each of them does absolutely absolutely right so and it just it's a really good thing so we we hit on the quantitative and qualitative as well Excellent. Well, listen, Dion, this has been great. All of Dion's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so uh, you can definitely reach out to me on LinkedIn, Dion Major. You can also visit our website at revenue-bydesign.com. We've got some free resources for our business community there. Um, and of course, we're we'll ha always happy to have a conversation. So please feel free to reach out. Yeah, absolutely. I would encourage you to do so. Uh, thanks again, Dion. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, John, for having me. I appreciate it.